Good day, I'm Professor Andreas Engelbrecht, I'm the Head of Emergency Medicine at Steve Beaker Academic Hospital and the University of Pretoria and I'm also a consultant for the FPD and I want to talk today about a very excellent course called the short course in Emergency Toxicology and Venomology and with me is Dr. Vidya Lalu. Now I just want to um, talk a little bit about a very important topic that we cover in this course and that is, um, you know, uh, tricyclic antidepressant overdose. Do you think, Vidya, that uh, cyclic antidepressant overdose is still a relevant and important topic in toxicology? Today? You know, these days people use other antidepressants, um, much more advanced ones, but we still find a lot of people taking tricyclic antidepressants for not just depression, but also for chronic nerve pain, neuralgias that they have. Um, and just to help them sleep. I think the thing with tricyclic antidepressants is they are effective and they are cheap. That's right. And uh, for those reasons they uh, are still commonly used, especially in the public sector, uh, but actually widely. And as you, as you mentioned, for those other indications, they are actually used very wi wi uh, widely. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the patient that comes in, uh, that has taken an overdose, that gets pushed to the back of the emergency department, maybe not get a lot of uh, attention and when you know somebody goes to see the patient a little bit later on they discover that the patient is either close to cardiac arrest or already in cardiac arrest. Yes this is a scenario we would love to never ever see in our uh, emergency departments and for that reason if you have a patient that is suspected to have a tricyclic antidepressant or any other sodium channel blocker overdose um, we should be moving those patients into the resuscitation areas. We should be doing an ECG within 10 minutes um, so that we can see if there are any cardiotoxic effects of that drug. Yeah, and I think uh, it's important to point out that toxicology is the leading cause of death in young patients. So although, um, you know, it might be uh, considered a, 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 uh, not a leading cause of death in the population overall, I think in young patients, toxicology causes a disproportionately high number of deaths and I think there's a lot that we can actually do to manage these patients. Can you point on some of the pills maybe that, that comes out in this course in terms of you know, how you uh, alter CPR uh, and, and treatment of cardiac resuscitation in these patients? Absolutely. I mean, when we're doing CPR, remember the things that save lives in CPR, one of them is reversing the cause. So we always need to be applying our minds and seeing what exactly went wrong in the patient and how can we reverse it. So with CPR specifically, we're going to be uh, doing CPR for longer. We're going to administer antidotes if they are available. Um, we're going to then think about rescue therapies that can be used um, with the CPR. For example, intralipid in the case of sodium channel blockers. And yeah. these are things that can actually get return of spontaneous circulation. Absolutely right. So as you said, we'll carry on with CPR longer. And of course, the antidote, if there's any of the cardiotoxic changes in tricyclic antidepressants is sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and that's a drug that can be administered. And this, this is just an example of uh, many of the pills that will be coming out of this course. Now, I want to just move on a little bit to another aspect of this course, and that is actually venomology. Um, and uh, I think snake bite is uh, probably one of the things that's extremely important to talk about. You know, the WHO has recently uh, made snake bite uh, a one of its neglected tropical diseases with a big campaign to decrease the number of uh, deaths from snake bite um, dramatically uh, over the next uh, uh, couple of years. So I think, can you mention one or two of the pearls that comes out of this course that uh, people will be learning about snake bite? Oh, there's so many, but um, well, there's a polyvalent antivenom and people need to know exactly which snakes are covered by that antivenom. So we have lovely mnemonics and things to identify uh, the different snakes that, that this uh, antivenom is applicable for. Um, and then, you know, managing the actual administration of the antivenom and managing a tourniquet, should it be on, should it be off, those are things that we go into in quite good detail and with simulations so people get a chance to practice it hands-on um, and get a feel of, of safely managing snake bites. 